Meeting. <laughs> okay. Um, I am calling to order the regular monthly meeting of the EDC. This is February 9th, we, but not our regular night, but uh, our February monthly meeting. Um, the agenda is up on the screen. Um, uh, additions or deletions. We will take citizen comments uh, about our agenda uh, at the beginning, and I will read the comments that have been posted on the discussion forum. For the minutes, um, I'm going to ask that we um, that we, unless there's something really urgent with our working groups or other initiatives, that we that we uh, keep to keep that very brief or skip over it, and so that we can focus on the two major uh, grant proposals and uh, a very brief uh, profile of a, of a grant application that is coming. It's not ready tonight, but it's coming down the pipe. So that's the agenda. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? And if you are sorry, if you're if you're not on video, we can't see you. So just raise your hand or come on to video. And or maybe uh, Patrick, you always do a good job. Or someone can monitor the chat, the uh, yeah, the chat and the um, participants. So Nikki, you can do that. Any additions or deletions to the agenda? Okay. Um, we we may we likely will have time. I want to say not for sure to have citizen comments about housing and marketing. Um, and childcare um, during our discussions. But uh, if there's anyone who would like to uh, make a comment now about those topics, who is not an EDC member, uh, please just raise your hand, push the raising hand button. While you do that, I will go to the website and get the voluminous comments that have been posted. I didn't see any earlier today. Zero. No, there aren't any. I'm just. Yeah, I was about to say. I, like, I, mean, if I was going to comment just to make a comment on the lack of comments. Well, I there is a comment by me welcoming people to comment. <laughs> that was very nice. All right. Um, let me just make sure that there isn't a last minute comment. Are there any anyone in the meeting would like to say anything, or can you hope? <laughs> well, there are seventeen views of my welcome. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, seeing none. Um, we, the minutes from January fifth are in the uh, are on the server on on the website. Oh, is Eric there? Yeah. I, I can't. I didn't see. Um. Uh, hold on. Let me. Um. I don't see him unless he's no. I don't see him yet. Um. So the minutes from January 5th are posted. Could uh, I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve the minutes as posted. Todd, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right, the minutes are passed. Okay. Are there any, any, any of the EDC initiatives or the working groups besides marketing and housing that, uh, or, or, um, that want to say anything or need to say anything? Todd has his hand next, up. Next, next time. Todd, go ahead. Yeah, just a super brief update. Um, we've got our portal ready from John, and I've reached out an email to each of the providers' representatives to get the ball rolling on portal sign up and next steps um, for the grant process. So just the ball is rolling, and um, I hope to meet with each of them um, next week. That's it from us. The select board on the same vein, the select board approved the community grants. They added one condition to the Otaquichi River Trail grant to make sure that the changes that they were making to make the trail more accessible was completely in compliance with ADA regulations. And David Green will act as the advisor to that. Um, otherwise, they approved it without any problem. And um, the one thing that we were going to go over, but like we can do it next month, is that attached to that. To those approvals are the reporting process that we're going to put so, into effect, but we can go over that next. Well, so actually, the grant agreement is what what I thought we at a high level what we I, I, we've integrated into the new grant agreement, which no one has signed yet. Quarterly reporting back right. for grants over five thousand dollars. Right, but how that is what's like, in it? The, the elements of that we'll go over next yeah, month. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other any other old business in effect? Okay. All right. Um, let me just introduce the new business. We have, as you all know, I think two major grant proposals. Um, 
the third item at the end, I do want um, to ask Carolyn Huffstetler, who is in the process of putting together a fifth proposal for child care. It's not ready. It's going through the same process that the other four did. But I want people to know it, it's concrete enough that I want people to be aware that it's coming down the pike. It's not just it's not ready, but it's concrete. And so I want people to be aware of that when you're making decisions tonight. I want to give I want to introduce uh, this discussion by telling people what our financial condition is. And so we're because of our shift in emphasis, which we're now we're now experiencing sort of for the first time, the things that I'm about to say, I think this is terrific. It, it, it really forces us to make sure that we're allocating the funds to the highest and best use. Um, but it does create more difficult decisions. So we currently have um, about, we have $6,000 of unencumbered funds as of today, right? It, it, uh, we in we have a, we have four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the bank, but that four hundred forty five of that is committed to people who have the right to draw against it. Now, we three hundred and thirty of that is the child care, and a hundred of it is the you know is the um. Uh, the community grants and so we all can have in our mind kind of that's not all going to happen tomorrow but it's also not going to be over three or four years it's i would expect most of those funds or all of those funds would be expended over the next 12 months but last year 2022 we received three hundred and sixty thousand dollars in revenue and that revenue that that revenue quarterly has been growing. The fourth quarter actually was this, about the same as the third. It was about the same growth as the third quarter, but the growth rate has been accelerating. 2022 was up 35% over 2021 and is up 20% over the highest, over 2019, something like that. So it was a very good year from a financial point of view. The economy, it's a reasonable measure of our economy anyway. It, is growing. There's anybody's guess about whether there'll be a, a, a recession in 2023. Some people, you know, you all read the paper the same as I do. Um, but the money that we're granting tonight, if we decide to grant it, is money that we don't have in the bank. I mean, we don't we don't have it's it's not it, we we don't have access we have access to cash, but we'd have to borrow it in effect for, in terms of timing from the other grantees which I think we could do within reason, but I don't think we should make, we should be doing it aggressively. So we need to think not only about the amounts of money that we are thinking about that are being requested, but also the timing of when those funds would be requested. And I think that's actually something that neither proposal anticipated, I didn't ask, neither proposal anticipated. So we'll wanna know from the marketing and housing groups when they think their funds would be needed, roughly, roughly speaking. Um, John, quick question. Yeah. Uh, of the money that we get in, can you give us a rough idea of each quarter, how much that typically is? I mean, as, as it's been in, like, say, last year? Yeah, I can. And in fact, let me just show you. Um, I think I'm, give me a second and I will show you. Um, I think it's on the EDC website, but if it's not, it's in the system. So this is, um, we're not seeing it. Yeah, no, I know I'm going to share it. Hold on one second. This is actually on the EDC website. It's under about the EDC. And you can see that we're as of end of 2022, we're at $2 million. You can see that most, you know, the, the first and the fourth quarter, you really have to look at 2019, where it's pretty can you low. Blow it up? Can I blow it up? Um, yeah. yeah, let me see if. Uh, yeah, well, um, basically, the, the uh, 
it's pretty easy for let's see 35 percent is in the fourth uh 20 percent is in the first quarter six fifteen percent is in the or 18 percent is in the second quarter 15 percent is in the third quarter and 35 percent is in the fourth quarter well done okay so it's heavy in the fourth, the fourth quarter is the big, the third quarter is the weakest, the fourth quarter is the biggest. It's split pretty evenly between the first and the second half of the year. Because the first quarter and the fourth quarter are bigger and the second quarter and the third quarter are smaller. So I just want people to be aware of that. We have proposals in front of us for $400,000 of requests and a child care proposal for about $95,000 coming, coming soon. So, Marianne? Do, do any of the um, promised, you know, I know some of the funds we talked about, like if this happened right. or they may not spend it all. Is there like a time period at which those funds stop being covered? The, the, we have, um, there, there isn't a formal one. Um, I have not, Sally and I together have not at all been aggressive about going after people because I think we both believe, I don't want to speak for Sally, but I certainly <laughs> believe that the natural <laughs> if you don't spend this money soon, you're going to lose it, will be to spend the money. Right. So in, counted in this um, calculation is about $95,000 of already recaptured funds on projects that are no longer active. Okay. Um, I, the, con the conditional grants that we gave I do not believe will yield anything back to us okay. because we all know what the conditions were and they're basically, the grants are designed to give the money yeah. except in absurd circumstances. So I don't think there's, I, I wouldn't count on any <laughs> any extra magic Darn. to solve our problem. Hoping for magic. <laughs> so that's where we are. Okay, any other comments or questions before we go into, I guess the housing one first? <laughs> Recording in progress. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh. Um. All right, Jilla, is it you or um? It's Trina is here, and I'm going. To, she's going to do some, and I'm going to do So I have to push share. Okay. Right, so just let me know when you. Hey, okay. I'm starting. Oh, so go to the next bit. No. Um, oh, so this start. one. Okay, so this is a, this is the proposal from the Housing and Working Group for 2023. We have funds currently that will take us to the end of the month. Um, and then we want to be talking to you. So we're going to talk to you about what we've done and what we want to do. So on the next slide. So first of all, just a recap of the, the what we're working against. We're working in the, in the housing crisis that's affecting economic development. There's an acute shortage of housing. Local workers can't afford to rent or buy. Business and organizations can't find the staff they need. Um, people who want to accept open positions can't find anywhere to live. And working families with essential jobs are leaving the area to take jobs in other areas where they can live within their means. Or the alternative is they're commuting long distances, which might be okay in the summer, quickly becomes not fun in the winter. And I just want to tell you that this is continuing. I just met with two people at lunchtime who've just got um, an eviction notice because their landlord wants to move their apartment to be a short-term rental. So every time we create a housing unit, one seems to disappear. So we have to keep working. Um, and to size what we want, we need many housing units. Um, the Regional Planning Commission has estimated we're really talking about 500 units. For Woodstock? Yes. 300 to buy, 200 to rent. We're talking a lot for people who already work here or would like to work here. Um, the homes to rent, we're looking at 
having something to rent below 1500 a month and homes to buy below the $450,000 range. So within that context, the housing working group is focused on increasing the opportunity for local workers, stress local workers, to find housing through rentals and home ownership. Okay, so that's our context. So next one. So when you look at what can you do in the housing uh, crisis, basically what you can do is to increase availability of homes for renters and home buyers, or you can decrease the cost of homes that already exist for renters or home buyers. So if you look at this matrix and look in the top left, one of the things you can do is to increase availability for renters. And what that means is that you're, you're setting yourself an objective to make it more attractive for developers and property owners to create long-term rental homes. And then if you want to increase the availability of, for home buyers, you have to make it more attractive for developers and existing homeowners to create modest homes and new units by rehab conversion or new builds. You can also decrease the cost of market properties. So you can make market rents more affordable. And if you can put a local worker into a, a market home, rather than it uh, being used as a short-term rental or being used as somebody who just like to live in Woodstock, that's an extra housing unit for a local worker. And then you can also look at ways to decrease the cost for home buyers. So if we can increase the number of qualified home buyers who are also local workers, we've also achieved our objective. So four different things to think about. And, and it's important to note that the federal and the state government and nonprofits have lots of programs working in all these areas. So when we look at tools, we've got a long, long list to choose from. Okay, so um, next slide. Next slide. Oh, this is, I did next. Oh, I'm looking at the mic, wrong screen, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Okay, so um, just to give you some examples of how what you can do within each of these boxes. So in that top left one, to increase the availability for renters, you can reduce the developer's costs with things like grants to the developers, loan guarantees, tax credits, bylaw reform, fast track processing, property tax reductions. Or you can incentivize property owners to convert existing housing units for local workers. So you can look at things like home sharing, rental matching, short term rental recovery. To make it uh, more attractive for home buyers and, and get increased availability, you can make it more attractive for developers to actually concentrate on smaller homes. Is right now it's much more attractive for any developer to go and help build a million dollar, multi-million dollar home. And that's why we're not getting any homes built under 400,000. Um, but you can do some things to help there. You can start providing developers grants and loan guarantees. You can give incentives to homeowners to create new units within their home. Um, and you can remove some of these regulatory hurdles for ADUs or new units with, within existing homes to make it easier. Each time you make it easier and reduce do things, you effectively reduce costs. Um, and then in that blue square, you can decrease the cost for renters. So, I mean, well-known um, federal and state government things are to subsidize housing units. That's Safford Commons and Mellish Woods. Um, other things people do are to use housing vouchers. And if we targeted those to local workers, that would help achieve our objective. And then in the green box, to increase the number of qualified home buyers, you can do it in two different ways. You can either help with the initial purchase costs, like helping with the, um, the closing costs, grants for that, or you can reduce the monthly costs. And you can do that by helping with down payment assistance, or, um, or the mortgage loan costs, property tax holidays, things like that. So you've got lots and lots of cho tools to choose from. And then on the, so on the next slide, uh, one bag. Yes, sorry. So where we've been playing is in that top left-hand box. We've had two programs and one support service. 
And that's where all of our activity for the past year has been. So on the next slide. So the two programs that we have had have created five homes in the nine months since we've been in existence. So the first program is the ADU Workforce Rental Pilot Program. And we've been offering incentives to encourage property owners to create ADUs. So we had three grants, $10,000 available. And our stipulations were that the ADU must be available to rent to a local worker for three years. And there's a minimum one year lease and a maximum rent the amount. And the results of that are we've awarded all three units. And so if you look at the cost per unit for us, it's $10,000, that's 3,300 per year. And we've been really fortunate here because the program has aligned with a state program. So everybody who has worked with us has also been eligible for the Vermont Housing Improvement Program. So they've got um, more money, sometimes up to 50,000. So we've incentivized something and then the rewards have come in multiple ways. So that's worked really well and it should continue to work because that program is going to be funded again. Um, and then on the rental incentive program, we had incentives to encourage property owners to convert existing housing units into long-term rentals. So we saw this as really low-hanging fruit. It's a property that's already there, can switch tomorrow to become a rental unit for a local worker. And we had five grants of up to $7,000, um, either for something that's being used as a short-term rental, something that's not being used at all right now. Um, we had the same kind of stipulations. We haven't been so successful on this one. We've had two, we've granted two of five available grants. In each case, those people are, are in there living right now. So we've got one, um, which is renting for dollars for three bedrooms and one $800 for three bedrooms. So the cost per home there is $7,000, that's 3,500 a year. So we need to do some more work on that program to make it more effective. Okay. And then the other, the byproduct of all of this uh, that we've learned is that there's value in having an identified person, in this case, the housing advisor, who's one point of contact for everybody. So that's created some momentum that we can't express as results in our programs. But the housing advisor gets calls from landlords who are not looking for a grant, but want to rent to locals and want to know how to do that and want to know how to find those locals. And then we've had employers um, calling, searching for housing for their employees. Sometimes there's a match, not as much as you'd like, but you can see how this might develop over time. Okay, so um, just to do the money on this one, We've committed 64,000 of the 93,000 awarded. So we're sort of in the same position as you and that we've got money committed, but it's still in the bank. Um, and we've got money that's uncommitted. So just to look at each program with the ADU Workforce Rental Pilot Program, that money has, was awarded and it's all gone. Three $10,000 grants, cost per home, 3,300. And that's resulting in three new housing units for three years. And then the rental incentive program, um, it's we've committed 14,000. The cost per home is really quite similar, 3,500. And but we're but we're carrying 18,000 into next year. So you'll see some numbers soon that are small because we're carrying that 18,000. And then our support costs and expenses. Um, the housing advisor cost us 20,000. We spent money on attorney fees. We had a grant from the Windsor County Board of Realtors that paid those attorney fees. So we have 11,000 <clears throat> we have 11,000 to carry in to next year. So we're not going to be asking you for money expenses. Okay, so um, this is what we want to do on the next slide. This is what we want to do in 2023. We want to start playing in more boxes. We want to, what we're doing is really piloting programs. We want to do lots of small programs and see which ones work and rather than put all of our eggs in one basket. 
So as in the pink box, we, we want to continue increasing availability to renters. So we really want to continue the two programs that we're doing and help more people create ADUs. Mm -hmm. On the decrease in the cost side, we want to start looking at ways that we can decrease the cost to local workers and take advantage of homes that are already out there to rent, but make it possible for, lo for local workers to rent them. And then the last one, we want to start looking at how we can help people to buy homes. So each time um, a local person <laughs> buys a home, that's a local worker who's staying here, establishing their life, and it's a home sold to a local rather than to a second homeowner, somebody that's going to do Airbnbs, and then we've got one less local we need to house. So if we can think of it all in this big picture, it's all working in. So Trina's going to take you through the different programs, but basically we've got three existing programs or two programs in a service that we want to continue. And then we've got six <coughs> new things that we want to continue. That you want to in, in launch. Start. Yes, thank you. That we want to start. Okay. Any questions so far? Uh, I've got a quick question. For the rental incentive program, is that going towards homeowners that are in Woodstock only, or does that include the greater Woodstock area? I guess the same question goes over towards down payment assistance program. Would that go to homes that are in Woodstock? Or, I mean, what's your what's your vision? Um, so specifically on the rental incentive one, uh, we have an enhancement that we want to make so that we change the rules from what they are, which was only in Woodstock, to um, adjacent to Woodstock, so that we can adjacent to Woodstock if. <clears throat> Um, can house a Woodstock worker. So if you're if you're if the house is in Bridgewater yep. and you're going to house a Bridgewater worker, I, we didn't think that could fly with EDC money. But a Bridgewater house for Woodstock a worker, yes. So we want to change that. Okay. And we haven't got to the level of detail yet with the down payments to think that one through. But our heads will be in the same place. Sure. Okay. So Trina, do you want to do the next slide? Yes. Hello, everyone. You can go ahead and go to the next slide, John. Okay. So in 2023, Joe mentioned can you Sorry, hear me okay? Yeah, I can. Uh, just to interrupt for one minute, I just because sure. I want to leave, there's a lot of people on the, you know, a lot of people are listening in and I want to leave time for comments and so forth. So mm -hmm. I, I would, you know, try I, these programs. I So go as quickly as you can and then we'll have discussion. You can refer back if we need to. Yes, I won't. I won't repeat what the program is. I'll focus on just the enhancements and things like that. How about that? Okay, great. Okay, so in 2023, we want to continue the ADU workforce rental program. Uh, basically, the same eligibility and requirement rules. However, we want to increase it from three ADUs to seven. So we're asking for seventy thousand dollars in grants that would provide seven new housing units for a term of three years. Um, in addition, we want to implement some enhancements to the program, working with uh, uh, municipal government, uh, planning commission uh, team to reduce the cost incurred in creating and owning a, an ADU. What we're finding is that uh, we're giving out grants, town funds in the terms of the 1% tax, but then we are asking those same folks to pay part of that back to the town in terms of fees. So we're looking to find some type of relief there um, that would make sense as far as a financial perspective. Um, <clears throat> we're also um, looking to add, uh, address the challenges and risks by addressing it with landlord services. We've had some problems with qualified tenants as far as um, some folks, uh, what documentation was needed. So we're cinching that up with what we call landlord services, which is pretty much my time and make it more official um, to spend time with landlords um, and those interested in the programs with the questions and help that they need. Uh, of course, other risks and challenges are the ease of the process. We know it's not easy. A lot of folks don't know where to begin with an ADU. And that's why we're requesting a support for the ADU support program, making that a little bit more official this year too. Um, and then contractor availability um, is still a risk overall. Um, and we're looking at 
working with some folks in the area, maybe some developers or uh, building, finding other resources and ways to get things done besides the customary standard construction, whether that's in terms of something more modular or prefab that could help to drive the cost down and pro provide relief to the contractors in the area. Next slide. The rental incentive, we want to continue. Um, uh, as Jill had mentioned, this wasn't as successful as the ADU program for a number of reasons um, that we're working with the town on regarding STR enforcement and some other things that might help to uh, make this uh, a, a better program. But in the meantime, what we've done is we're decreasing the amount from five rental pro, um, dwellings to two so that we can work some of those things out. Um, We've also like to make some changes to it um, to include other owners that Jill mentioned in neighboring towns, uh, Bridgewater, for example. And the benefit to Woodstock is still the dwelling would be rented to a local worker. So there's still benefit to the town in, in that approach. It just opens it up for more opportunities. We're also looking at some enhancements that would change the incentive amounts if you have, uh, we want to try to avoid having a uh, one tenant move into a larger home that's for rent and, and maybe do something where it's uh, more, more tenants uh, in a larger home, you get a higher incentive, some type of a, a, a phased or ranged approach on that. <clears throat> and then we're also looking at uh, the lease periods, rent limits and things like that. Just We've got some general ideas trying to make the rental incentive more attractive to folks in the area. Uh, one of the big things there too are to look at a shorter lease period, six months, that would also support the seasonal workers in the area. Okay, next slide. ADU support service. This is uh, something I alluded to. Um, this is basically uh, uh, meal, uh, allocating more time to building out this program. We have a checklist. We want to create a handbook and basically uh, make it easy for folks that are interested in doing ADUs, answer their questions in depth, um, help them where to begin, um, and create relationships with some of the local contractors and other professionals that can help support the program and have those available to folks that call in and are interested. Um, we want to spend more time looking at the changing regulations. Um, we have changes here in the town, whether it be in terms of zoning um, changes and also at the state. So staying on top of that is very important, especially in this time with everything kind of up in the air and everyone moving to uh, increase housing. We want to stay on top of that so we can make the most of it for our local folks. What's the dollar cost of this of this item? Trina's time. My time. But yeah. what's the number? Oh, we have um, a number of hours, I don't think. Yes. Yeah, so basically, uh, currently allocated about 10 hours a week uh, this year. Next year, we're looking at, I believe it was 15 hours a week uh, that I would be working. So. But, 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 okay. So at some point, though, there's a dollar figure attached to this. Uh, yes, that's covered in the last slide. We're at the housing advisor okay. budget, I believe, is... Uh, 38,000, I believe, Jill. We kept it as a total. We haven't divided it up. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions on that? Well, I, I got a question. So the, but, but Trina, the, the housing advisor, uh, the, the thought is that's one person that will handle all of the different programs, correct? Correct. All right. So, so it'll be a single cost. It'll just be spread out over multiple Right, right. We okay. didn't break it out for, for each program here. We can. Right. But um, all the other programs are broken out, so we can take the total, subtract each of the programs. Yeah, exactly. Right. We can do the one. No. Yeah, yeah. We no. can do the math. We can show you that math. Right. Can I answer the question? Yeah. The costs of the program are the incentive costs. This time we've kept the costs of the housing advisor and the legal costs and any other expenses as one lump sum. Okay. We haven't divided them according to program right. because they're total uh, variables depending where you go. I'm asking for so the lump sum. The yeah. lump sum is 38,000. Thank you. That's Sorry. Right. 15 hours a week. Yes. Right. Yeah. So more we than we can do that math. Yes, we right. got that far. Yeah. 
I thought you wanted a spreadsheet. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Okay. Yeah. okay. <clears throat> the home share incentive uh, pilot. We want to uh, work more with the Thompson. They've created that program, but uh, they've had one. Um, Am I on the right slide? Sorry. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Back Thanks. up one, if you don't mind. You can back. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, basically, we're wanting to incentivize this program. Uh, Thompson Center placed one uh, host and, and guest tenant together. And there's a big perception that this is for seniors only. Right. So what we'd like to do is uh, address it with more promotion and add this incentive. Burlington recently just added an incentive to their home share in a pilot. And the program that we're using here is the same that Burlington is using. So we'd like to follow their lead and provide the thousand dollars per per roommate. Should Some of the same rules still apply: local worker, uh, one uh, at least that type of thing. So, okay. multi-unit housing. Uh, this pretty much mimics the ADU program. However, it's multi-unit housing and it needs to be split up differently because there's different statutory uh, zoning rules for multi-unit housing as opposed to an ADU. So we're wanting to uh, provide four housing units at a cost of 40,000. That would be two, two multi-unit housings, <laughs> units. Um, and <clears throat> the same Eligibility requirements would apply for um, the tenant as far as working in Wood Woodstock, and they would also benefit from the ease of process as far as the using ADU support, landlord services, um, that type of thing. So that would be somebody creating two ADUs in, in, on one property. Right. <laughs> it, I mean, that's that basically yes, but we can't call it an ADU because ADU by definition is different than a multi-unit definition. Right, right. No, I get that. You're splitting yeah. hairs a little bit, but basically yes. So I have a barn and I make two apartments in it. Yes. yes. And then it's called a multi-unit. Right, got it. Correct. Okay, thank you. Or you have a large home and you create two apartments, that yep. type of thing. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Any bit, uh, other questions? Okay, next slide, please. Landlord assistance support. Um, I mentioned this in prior slides as well. This again is my time to help support the programs um, in a more official stance. Um, we've needed this service um, based off some of the experience that I've had this year. Uh, landlords want some training, um, support of all of our programs, um, the ADU rental incentive and the home share. And uh, this has been done in the past, kind of unofficially by me with some of our applicants for closure to bring things um, to the final agreement. Um, so we just wanted to make sure we allocate time for that this year. Of course, we're, there's still the unknown um, as far as landlord questions and concerns, but we wanna be able to help them address those and feel comfortable about their doing in the programs. Another idea that we have is the employee rent assistance pilot. This is basically helping uh, folks with security deposits um, and making it a, a more reasonable price for them to get into apartments here in Woodstock. As you know, the rent is, is very high if you're not in one of these programs. So this is a way that we could help and we could work with some of the employers, uh, employees in the area to find out who needs this assistance um, and identify uh, opportunities that way. Um, it would be payable directly to uh, the landlord. Um, it's not something that would be paid to tenants themselves. Um, and as far as defining who is eligible, uh, still to be determined, we want to work this through a little bit more, but I would envision it'd be possibly people that are new to the area that have already had huge moving expenses or maybe income-based, that type of thing. <clears throat> And it basically helps the local workers obtain local rents um, at a lower rental rate when they get help with the security deposit. Okay. Uh, I believe, Jill, did you want to cover the last two? Sure. Okay. So one of the things that's become evident as we've been looking more at housing is how many programs there are in 
date to buy a home. However, it's not very easy to find out about those programs. So given that we have this person who's a focal point, we think we can provide um, a service for home buyer gateway services. So like one person, you come to that person, she knows all the different programs and she just directs you to them. She doesn't do them, but she says, oh, the HFA has these programs. Twin Pines has these programs. The HCB has these programs. Just you need to do this kind of program. Make sure you go and talk to them. So just a, like a, somebody to help you um, navigate your way to them so that we can get people off the ground on their home buying things. So not a lot of work, um, but could be very helpful. And then the next one, um, down payment assistance pilot. Many of these programs that the state provides have uh, restrictions on them. So you you want to help people with a down payment. It's the hardest thing um, for people to do is to save a down payment. As the house for price goes up, it becomes harder and harder. You're looking at closing costs these days of 10,000, approaching 10,000, and then you want to get to a down payment of at least 5% to get a decent uh, interest rate. Um, but the state programs are limited to often to first time home buyers. So if you're a second time home buyer, you can't get anything. If um, your income is over a certain level, you can't get anything. So this is specifically looking at seeing if we can extend the down payment programs that are already out there to people who are ineligible. So never doing anything that the state would do, but just picking up a few people who the state doesn't help to say, yes, we, you're eligible, you're a Woodstock worker, and we can help you in that way. And a down payment is usually a loan. It's not a grant. It can be paid back when the house is sold. If somebody was going to move within three years, then you certainly ask for it to be paid back immediately. You might forgive it over a longer time period. So you can start thinking about this as um, a grant of 25,000 max, because you'd set a maximum of $500,000 home. Um, so then you would give you'd be thinking about maybe giving four twenty thousand dollar grants. If each of those um, stayed with the house for three years, and it would, otherwise it would be repaid. You could be thinking about six thousand six hundred um, each year for that house. So it sounds a big lump sum, twenty thousand. It breaks down quite quickly, and if you got two workers into that house um, and you're doing something for 3,300, and you're potentially uh, making it possible for someone to live here long term and getting a, a local worker out of that. Okay. So the next slide. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I keep forgetting to change my slide. Okay. So all of this depends on continuing and expanding the housing advisor position to build and manage the programs. There's a huge number of things that Trina's been doing this year. Um, obviously, there's a lot in the setup here. Many of the programs are very similar, so they won't have that kind of setup. Um, but many of the things have to be continued. So we found that we need somebody who's really prepared to um, stay with each applicant, work through compliance agreements to make sure that our programs are, the money's getting to the people and the people who we help are the ones we want to help. So we've said that we want to expand the number of hours and increase the hourly rate a little bit as well, because we thought we were hiring an admin and actually we're hiring somebody much more sophisticated and skilled. Okay, any questions on that one? Should we move on? So the next slide, this is the summary that you probably want. So the total of all of these programs is 247,000. We've broken it out by existing programs, new programs, support costs and expenses, as you see there. And we've also thought about how do we look at this um, over time? So if you just have a quick look at the next program, we can't do everything at once and we'll bring things in through the year. So if we were to think about today, committing for support and expenses for the full year so that we lock Trina in and then some of the early programs and then we come back to you 
partway through the year for certainly the last couple of programs, if not the last um, three programs. So if you go back to the prior page, yeah. Then if you could um, if you could look to fund support costs and expenses today, continue the existing programs and start with at least the first two of the new programs. We would be we would be in a great place to keep going, to keep building momentum, and then come back to you later in the year for the last two programs with incentives. So what would be the, I'm not sure, I just want to make sure I'm following these numbers. The amount that you'd be looking for now would be the 38 plus the 70. We take away the 87, the 86. 161,000. Thank you. Yeah, if, and just a reminder too that some of these things like the ADU uh, workforce rental incentive, um, we pay a, a payment the first year um, <clears throat> that they begin renting. And then the other additional payments aren't right. made until, um, oh. well, the ADU is built and things like that. So the money is going to be paid out over the next few years. Right. That's right. But it, yeah. This again yeah. gets it to the yeah. timing and stuff. Right. 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 We could see it. We could do a cash exactly. flow. I think. Right. right. But that's that's what I like about the last page is you can literally attach the right. cash flow to these months. Mm. But it's exactly. the seventy thousand that you're saying is spread out over multiple years. Yes. Yes, particularly because as soon as you and the, it'll be the multi unit as well. Right. As soon as you get involved in building, I mean, you slow down. But mm -hmm. I think you want to make sure that your rent, most of the rental incentive money is there because right. that some of that, that moves faster. John so, Todd has a question. Todd, go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> thanks. Um, I love that this housing work. I, I think I would be comfortable making a motion about the support costs and expenses in existing programs. But in terms of the new programs, I feel like I personally would need more time because I can't build a door for $10,000. So I don't know what developers you're talking to or who says they can build these properties and make these multi-using housing rental incentives work or the incentive pilot. Like, I just think I'd personally need to see who you're talking to, what developers, what matrices they're using to say they can do this, what their time frame is, sort of that kind of stuff for the new programs, like a deeper dive. Can I answer that, Todd? Because I think there's a few misunderstandings there. So the home share incentive pilot goes to people who want to rent a room in their house, no work required, for $1,000 a room. <clears throat> okay, no I remember you talking about that one. Yeah, that's, that, that seems like an old one to me, but in the new programs. Okay. It's a, it's a, a tweak on an old one. Okay, and got it. <laughs> the multi-unit housing rental one, yes, those are people who have to work with um, developers to create their plans and then come to us. Yeah. So we could, we could start advertising the program and we already have somebody that wants to do it and they have to keep working on their plans before we're even going to say, yes, you can have it. So it's, it's the money is down the road, the commitment might be a bit earlier. And and it's just you're just offering an incentive. Nobody's doing anything for this amount of money. You're just saying to somebody, put ten thousand dollars <throat> into your sums, and it'll look a bit better. Yeah, no, I I totally get it. But as someone in four construction projects in Vermont, I don't see anyone building this. That's that's the thing. So show me show me someone who's building it, and I want to talk to them because I can't okay. find anyone to do any of that. So right now we've got. Um, money committed for three accessory dwelling units i'm sorry i mean the multi-unit housing who's building multi-unit housing for well, local that, workers i think it, it, when you say multi just to be clear right that's two it's just two it's it's the duplex or more plus, right it's yeah. just adding not, not basically, it's like adding a, a two mm -hmm. adus instead of one it right. just falls under a different legal status so we have one person that wants to do it who's working on plans right now a developer or like a just a person a homeowner yeah. the, the, the fastest way to get these things done is to work with homeowners yeah. they already own the properties they can see enhancing value for themselves they need a builder like the barn okay. conversion that trina mentioned for example yes yeah. exactly okay. yeah 
So, I mean, that's why we're not talking to you tonight about greenfield sites or anything, because that takes such a lot of time. We think that you, you can do more and more quickly with small programs like this. Okay, I, I, I understand what you, I, I get what you're, I don't need you to explain anymore. I thought you were talking about developers developing multi-unit, but I get where I was misconstruing. Homeowners, so, okay. homeowners yeah. becoming mini micro developers. Yes, and that's why, that's why Correct. these people need John, more got, support. Yeah, God, I like it. I got it. Thank you. John, you got Larry and Deborah. Yeah, Larry, yeah, thank you. Larry and Deborah. Uh, um, your mind's more of a general question. Um, I see throughout here, uh, like with a multi unit and with ADUs and whatever, that the, the, the um, condition is that they, we give them money, they make this, they do this work, and then they need to, quote, m make these units available. I was wondering how you monitor that in terms of uh, what does that mean, and what if there there isn't somebody that comes forward that's a worker, but uh, you know how long do they have to hold these open for right. for workers that kind of thing? <clears throat> Trina, do you want to answer that one because this is Trina's sure. job. So, um, someone who's building an ADU uh, when it, when it's ready to be rented or for the rental incentive, they have to supply me with certain documents. I have to see a copy of the lease. And I also need to see confirmation that the tenant is a, what we're calling a local worker or qualified tenant is what we're using in our legal agreements. They need to show proof that they work for a local Woodstock business or company work in this area um, for at least 25 hours a week. Um, or, or they don't get the money. Correct. So they don't, we don't give them any money up front to do the work. No, well, the ADU workforce rental, that one, they can get up to, I, I believe it's 50% of the funds showing receipts uh, from their build. They do not get the final payment until I see the first lease. And they've, Larry, I believe they've signed something so that if they don't follow through, we get the money back. Correct. Um, we have legal agreements and a promissory note, and I've also taken those down for each of the applicants and recorded those at town hall so they're attached to the property. And okay. so for the rental incentive, if they're doing it for two years, if they sign it for two years, and in that case, they would get $7,000 because it's uh, $3,000 for one year, $7,000 for two. At the beginning of the second year, I go back again and ask for a copy of uh, the lease and qualified tenant information. So we have some compliance steps that we're tracking. I have a database to keep track of it. Thank you. Deborah. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, I want to look into the new programs about things that could make an immediate difference, um, which I was looking at number one and number four. Mm -hmm. feel like those should be things that do get funded sooner. Um, and it was something that I've been wondering about lately a lot, which I'm really happy to see the employee rental assistant pilot, you know, like going the other way around of in helping the people actually move here since the landlords are having a harder time getting the people in. Um, and with something like that, I actually would love to see us commit more to helping somebody stay afford a house, which isn't just the um, getting in and their security, but the month there it's so much higher than some of these wages allow for people to afford monthly. And then I actually think those grants could be more and higher. Um, and then the question also is if it goes to security, does when it comes back, does it come back to us? Does it come back to the employee and things like that? But I think those grants could very realistically be higher so that people can actually afford to live here when, they're, when their wages are not going to afford it monthly. Right. Right. So I'm just wondering what you what your thoughts So are. we haven't gone far enough down that road investigating, but we yeah. can take all of those thoughts in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, other comments about this program? I All right, I, I just briefly, um, can I, I can just make a few comments and then I, I'm suggesting that we not make any, we not vote on any funding until we hear the remaining discussions. I just wanna make a couple of comments. First of all, great 
this is great work for the first year of so forth. I just, you know, this is, I think a reason, we've said this before, I think, but in pieces, um, you know, we've established kind of a professional staff capacity. We've got five units um, for $64,000, but that includes a whole lot of program building and so forth. It's, you know, um, and I think, Frankly, I think the ADU program is a clear success. I think the rental incentive program, the, the, the jury is still out. And I think your modest funding request for that reflects that uncertainty. Frankly, one thing that I would consider, I don't think we have to be, we could make a decision to repurpose those rental incentive, the, 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 the short-term rental incentive program into the ADU program if you felt there was demand for nine or something like that. I don't know if you're, if you're asking for the 21,000 because you've got 18,000 left over and you have to use it. No, we really want to continue. We want to get the rental incentive. You want to get it right. right. Okay. Because if you can, because you can turn it over in a month. I understand. Building an ADU takes a year. Yeah, I understand. Um, the, the um, two more comments. The first is, is that just for, for us to think ahead to the end of this meeting, if we took everything in the left-hand column and the first two new programs, which, to use Todd's words, they're, they look like old programs, right? <laughs> because the multi-unit is really an ADU program, but we can't call it that, and home share is an existing program. And if we recognize that of those funds, which add up to $160,000, $110,000 of them are really three-year commitments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they were spread equally over those three years, and they may not be, so this may be a little bit wrong, but it's something like committing, roughly speaking, $100,000 this year, $30,000 next year, and $30,000 the year after. And I think that as we move into a major grant mindset and approach, that structuring grant requests in that way is a very useful thing to do. Yes. And I would be much more comfortable granting hundred six and, and and committing encumbering thirty thousand dollars of next year's money you know and thirty thousand of the following year's money I'd be comfortable making that decision now um I mean we could always revisit it but 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 my point is that then I would saying let's let's put a hundred and sixty thousand aside I'm not trying to make a decision I'm just saying right. structurally the idea of having a multi-year program for something like housing I think is relevant so and it lets us keep working designing the projects keep advertising the projects yeah. and it actually allows us to come back and say well actually we're not going to need it all for that program it looks like we're going to need more for this program and be more flexible and i do think by the way if we were to start having multi-year commitments and we wanted to have flexibility we would i think have to want to establish a protocol of coming back to the edc for making those shifts mm -hmm. and so forth not on every yes. penny but sorry mary did you want no, to go ahead I, I think I've... okay the, the, the last thing I want to say is I, um, I think it will be very useful to have time this year to discuss the parts of the new program that are targeted towards individuals, of giving individuals money. And I totally respect Deborah's opinion and the committee for the working group for coming up with these ideas. And I'm personally, personally in favor of giving people that kind of support. But I just want to say, because you made a comment, you know, supporting the concept, that I have a I have a concern about it that I would express throughout later in the year about giving money to individuals through the EDC as opposed to through philanthropy or other means. Mm. And the reason is I was trying to figure out why I was uncomfortable with it. The first reason was I thought other people would be uncomfortable with it. <laughs> And but which I think they will, but we can deal with that. But the reason I think is that if we give workers a check for a good purpose, every worker will want that, and we don't want that to happen. If we give money to people who are building ADUs, every and everyone wants to build an ADU. We want that. We need 500 units of housing. If 500 workers came to us, and there are 500 workers, and said, why don't you give me the $2,000? Yeah. 
we wouldn't want that to happen. I mean, we would like it to happen, but we don't have the money to make it happen. It's not fair. But if 500 people came and said, we want to build ADUs, mm -hmm. we would like that. We'd pick whichever ones we could afford. So I think I'm not trying to make a decision now. I'm just basically saying that I think we need time to, to think through the difference between what I'll call institutional incentives and individual incentives and, and think through what the implications of those are. Yeah. Well, the other good thing, the other good thing about the ADUs is the state money, uh, because as as they said, yeah. uh, all of the people who have done the ADUs with have also gotten some of the state money. Yeah. So, so with regard to your comment about giving money to individuals, I mean, we the state and the federal government does it, I so know. we could look more at their justice mm -hmm. idea of how that works through and the comfort factor i would have no problem if another commission whose task was municipal governance were to do that i would pay taxes to do that but uh, you know i wouldn't want the marketing group to do it uh, you, do you see what i mean there's a plate I, I i don't know that it's the i don't know that it's sorry I, all i'm saying is i would like to have i i, I would Large appreciate time, having yeah. time to yeah. have this yeah. discussion so splitting up the request the way you've done yeah. it allows us to have that time that's my yeah. other point. And Marion, last comment, unless there's anything else in there yeah. we'll to mark. Yeah, but and it's just, it's, just it's related to your conversation opener. Yeah. And, it, and I don't know where I stand on it either, but I think one way to think about it, which is kind of how we framed how housing is relevant to economic development, is that there is an economic need for people to work in jobs in town and that it's supporting that. And that's a way in which it is economic development. You know, that that's the other kind of no. side of that conversation i'm in favor of yeah. spending the money it's just a question of whether we spent where we spend it uh, yeah. i would i would yeah so anyway uh, deborah last comment you get the last word yeah i i mean i i understand exactly where you're coming from and i think this is a longer conversation right. at the same time at different moments in time there have been programs that have offered people ten thousand dollars to move to vermont and Yes, that would be great if everybody who moved to River Vermont can get that, but it was only afforded to the people who came in during that period of time. And, right. you know, once it was used up, it was used up. So I think, you know, helping when you can help is a good idea. So I'm I'm still for it. Okay. All right. Any any last questions on marketing? I mean, uh, sorry, I'm housing. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very Thank, good you. Thank you. Trina. Thank you, Trina. And don't Thank go you. away because we're going to, I mean, we may have more questions. All right. Um, Sorry, I, is someone just checking the, the chat box? Oh, Patrick will no longer be able to do that. I can do it. I can okay, watch you'll it. just just keep an eye on it because I can't do that at the same time. All right, Patrick, let me um, yep. put up yours. And whoops, the sound here. That's right. right. Okay, you you can you can go to the first slide, John. Okay, so. Uh, what I'm going to do basically is take you through very quickly some of the results and stuff and, and uh, what our goals are uh, last year and in moving into this year. Uh, so we want to position Woodstock as the quintessential New England lifestyle destination, but in the digital space, because that's basically where uh, the new uh, the new visitors to, to Woodstock are coming from, they're the younger, younger generation and they're doing everything digitally. So everything that we're doing from the marketing side is leveraging digital. Uh, we want to future-proof future Woodstock. Uh, and, and so we can make that fully digital and self-sustainable. Uh, we want to nurture and activate qualified audience that's 100% owned by the town. What I mean by that is we collect their information and we're able to talk to them uh, anytime we want via email, uh, which is how we're doing it now, but we could also talk to them in other ways you know, in the future. Uh, and to qualify this a little bit, I wanna define uh, a little bit what we mean by qualified audience. Uh, you know, There's lots of people who come to Woodstock and there are people who have money and spend it in Woodstock and there are people who don't have money and, and come to Woodstock and enjoy what we're doing what we want to do with this program is bring in, you know, the the higher quality visitor, somebody who's going to go into the shops and buy things, you know, and eat at the restaurants and stay at the lodging establishments. So, uh, you know, that's what we mean by qualified. So as we look for people, we're using, uh, you know, revenue and or pardon me, income and where they live and so forth as pre-qualifiers of where we're doing our marketing and our advertising. 
Uh, and we want to provide marketing support for the Woodstock local businesses uh, and the community with initiatives and events. Uh, then communicate directly with the visitors. And that's the idea of being able to collect the names and be able to market to them uh, on a uh, individual basis. And, and that's all based on qualifying what they're interested in. Okay, next slide, John. Okay, so I'm not gonna run through all these numbers. We went through this last week uh, or last month, I mean. Uh, and the one thing I'll say about this is, uh, or two things I'll say. One is we are significantly beating industry averages in most cases by triple to quadruple uh, in terms of the results we're getting uh, and the economic impact. Uh, we've developed a formula uh, based on the average cost of somebody coming to Vermont uh, and we're being extremely conservative with this and estimating that we're driving $5 million worth of business. That could easily be double or triple of that uh, because we're we're keeping it very, we're, we're basically taking all of the industry averages and cutting them in half uh, just to be ultra conservative. Uh, so you know, what we're doing is, is driving economic development to Woodstock. Okay, next slide, John. Now, a bunch of people have asked uh, uh, to see what the creative looks like. So the next three slides are gonna show you some of the ads that are being produced by class four. Uh, and putting up on Facebook. Uh, and again, we're, we're putting these in places and looking for Facebook and Instagram people uh, that fit a certain criteria that we're, we're defining. And we're constantly re-looking at it and redefining it, uh, refreshing the ads, redoing them, and looking for the ads that pull the best response. So this is just a smattering of some of the stuff that, that we've seen on Facebook. Uh, go ahead, John, next slide. And Sorry. the next one, this will be uh, some of the stuff that we that you'll see on Instagram. Uh, and again, uh, you know, I sent this deck to all the EDC members. If uh, John, we can post this. Yeah, we'll post this. Anybody. We'll post this tomorrow morning on the EDC website. Sorry, we didn't get it up tonight. Yep, no problem. Uh, and then this is this is a sampling of the. Again, I labeled this wrong. My apologies. If this is actually the emails. Now, the three smaller ones just to show you that they vary in size based on what information is in the email. All of these have links back to the Woodstock VT website. Uh, and we can feature lots of different things based on the season and, and what the interest levels are on some of the, the, the people who are marketing to. Uh, the one on the right is just blowing it bigger so you can get a better sense of, of what the creative is. So this is this is just give you an idea of all the work that's being done uh, to drive you know, the the traffic to Woodstock VT. Okay, next slide, John. Okay, uh, so what we're we're looking to do, we're gonna focus on optimizing the existing program. You know, we built the program last year. Uh, it's, it's doing well, uh, but obviously when you first build something, you see things that you'd like to change and fix. So we're gonna, we're gonna spend this year uh, basically working on the program. So we'll extend the length of the, of the introductory flows. So these are, we, our flows are based on the seasons. So fall, winter, uh, spring, and summer. Uh, and so we'll we'll basically expand these a little bit further. Uh, we're gonna integrate, uh, oops. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. That's all right. Where should I go? Keep going, I'll tell you when. Okay. Uh, integrate the social channels and leverage those audiences into the paid program. So we're, we'll basically be looking more at what we're doing in Facebook uh, and Instagram. W what we what we basically do now on those channels is basically put up posts that are saying, you know, there's an event happening, this is happening. What we want to do is leverage those now to drive traffic in the same way we're doing with the ads, uh, do the same kind of thing with posts to drive them to Woodstock VT, again, to capture uh you know, their information and able to continue to market to them. Uh, develop content to share uh, the experiences of living and raising a family here. This is one of the things that we're gonna, we wanna do this year is develop uh, a video that is basically talking to people who have 
moved to Woodstock and why they moved here and be able to use that uh, to drive more families, you know, to, to come here. And ideally, again, we're looking at higher level, you know, uh, higher income level people. So ideally, maybe the potential of driving people here who have businesses and can, you know, bring their business and their family here at the same time. Time. So that's one of the, the things that we want to do as a kind of a new incentive this year. Uh, and then new flows to increase holiday messaging, because we we really, uh, you know, again, we're just trying to perfect what we've started. Uh, and now we're seeing things that, that can be better. And then the other part we want to do is provide resources and support local events. So basically leverage what we're doing, the, the framework itself, uh, emails and so forth, so that we can uh, drive more traffic to all of our different events uh, and so forth. Uh, let's see. All right. Then provide more marketing assets. So one of the things we've done last year is we developed uh, a digital asset library. So what we're going to do this year is actually put that library out for businesses to be able to use and for me to be able to use. Uh, and we're basically going to set up two types of, of material so that the media people don't get the same imagery as the business people, uh, so that we're, we're sharing many more imagery uh, than what we're doing now. Right now, we probably use the same three or four photos uh, currently on most of the stuff. So this will give access to local businesses and media. Uh, and then develop a content calendar, it's something that we, we wanted to do last year, but we, we spent more time building the engine. And the idea is, you know, assemble all of our events in all of this, the little things that are going on and develop a content calendar calendar in advance so we can do some of this work uh, ahead of time uh, and have everything planned and ready to go, uh, you know, and be much more efficient with what we what we have been doing. Okay, John, next slide. If anybody has any questions, pop in. I see there's a couple of comments in chat, so somebody may want to see if there's a, a question there. Uh, so, this is sort of some of the new, these are things we're talking about. This isn't necessarily things we're going to do, but they're things that we're going to talk about and figure out what uh, is going to be the best choice. So, you know, promote and establish, you know, new local local businesses through the chamber. Uh, and, you know, so basically in, in, incent people to join the chamber because you won't be able to get access to this without being a chamber member. Uh, okay. Promote local events. Yes, question? No, no, keep going, and then I'll ask it. There's a question in the chat at the end of this page. Go ahead. Okay. All right. And then promote local events uh, through the, the public promotion request form. We'll create the idea here is to, to create a way for people to say, hey, I want to promote this event, you know, and we'll be able, we won't be able to do everybody, uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll pilot this and see how it works and how we can make it, uh, make it accessible for people so they can be, become part of the emails that go out and so forth. Uh, social giveaways to increase engagement on the on the, or in the organic side of the world. Uh, some basically kind of what we're doing in the Facebook ads. We're we're offering free nights in Woodstock to come to our website and they sign up for it and have a chance to win. Uh, then we want to build a, a public performance database or dashboard so that people can pop in and they can see you know what's going on with the with the marketing and be able to the, the results and stuff that I showed you. You'll be able to just follow it along. Uh, and then the narrative uh, video content uh, distribution through new audiences. So this one's, uh, I don't, this one I'll just, I'll skate over right now because that's a little, a little more complicated. Uh, the question, John? Yeah, uh, Susie asked, um, looking, targeting higher income people, does that work against the housing initiatives? This was in the context of of families moving here, I think, rather than the yeah, this, this guess. Uh, the idea here, and looking at the higher value audiences, these are probably people who are going to be buying homes more expensive than uh, what the workers will will be purchasing. You know, if you're if you're a business owner and you're coming here, and you're bringing your business here, that's going to be a different person who is coming to work you know, somewhere. So this, we're hopefully, I kind of use the example, I did a lot of work, uh, lots and lots of work with American Express. And and the one thing with American Express is businesses never wanted to take the American Express card because they charge a higher discount rate. But the the sale to the businesses was, hey, go, okay, we understand that. But American Express cardholders spend twice, twice to three times as amount of money 
uh, than a Visa or a MasterCard. So it was a very easy sell to get them to understand you're losing money by not accepting the American Express card. And so we're looking for that American Express card type of person to come. Uh, and and that's you know that's the the we we want to drive traffic to Woodstock uh, that are going to support our businesses, support our our lodging establishments, and support our our retail stores. So that's that's kind of the the portion. When there. when you start targeting like um, income levels like that, you get into really dicey territory. Because um, and I put a link about the FTC going after people. Um, looking on, um, you know, uh, looking for instances like that, because there's just a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, well, I mean, you know, certain uh, groups get, uh, uh, they're not targeted, they're not get, they don't get these offers, stuff like that. Um, and so, you're you're getting into really dicey territory. I would have we're, we're here, using we're like using that. the very limited resources that Facebook give us, which are very very basic, very very rudimentary. We're not yeah. getting into a very sophisticated approach on this because we can't. There, yeah. it's, it's just not out there. So I don't. Think we're running okay. into the issue that I agree with you that if we get into that, if we did that on a higher level. Totally agree with that, but the, the the tools in Facebook are very very limited. When those tools are likely going away, because Facebook in January was sued by the regulators in in Europe and saying that that was highly discriminatory, and it is something yeah. that is highly discriminatory. Just from my perspective, that to say we're going to we're we're specifically looking for higher income people to come visit and come uh, work here. You're free to disagree well, with I'm that. Well, not looking for coming to work. Huh? Yeah, I I I I understand the the comment, but you know at the same time, you know we don't. I'll use the example and and we have when the when we have the bus come here with people, you know I hear from the businesses all the time that the buses come out, they go around, they look at the stores, they don't buy much, they don't eat much, they get back on the bus and they leave, and and all they've done is crowded the town. Uh, so I'm, I'm not saying that we're we're not we're not getting that sophisticated. We're not trying. We're just trying to find, you know, the, the people who are going to buy food, buy in our shops, and stay in lodging properties. And but we have very limited tools to do that with Facebook. And as you said, they're probably going to go away. In which case, you know, we'll we'll have to look at other ways to approach that. Uh, but you know, we're not doing anything so sophisticated. I, I totally agree with what you're saying, Susie. You can get a little funky. But we're not we're not really getting that that deep in it. I, I guess I'm a little bit confused because you're saying it's your intent to do that, but you know the tools are too blunt, so you really can't do that very well. But it's right. still your intent to do that. And if those tools go away, you're going to look for some other tools. So your intent is still to target higher income people and sort of discourage lower income people from visiting or. No, 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 no. Don't say moving. you're saying the word discourage, and we're not discouraging anybody. What we're looking for are the right customers to come to Woodstock. You just, just like we're trying to match people who, who make sense to come here, who can stay at the Woodstock Inn or the B&B. You know, Woodstock's not an inexpensive place. And, and so we're looking for those people who can afford to stay here and spend their money here. So we're not, we're not eliminating anybody. We're not trying to discourage anybody. We're not doing that at all. We're just looking for people who can afford to be here. And you're perpetuating that sort of expense, that high price point for Woodstock by, you know, I don't know. I, I, I said my piece, so. Yeah. I think this is a, Susie, it's a, this is, I think, one of the right forums to bring that up in. It's not the only one. And, and it's a broader, it's, I think it's also, also a broader conversation. Um, but anyway, I think I think your point is clear. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think your point is clear. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, was there any other questions, Sean? No. Uh, no. Okay. No, 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 no. You can, you can bring me to, to the next slide. Okay. One of the things that we really focused on this year is looking at all of the marketing things that are being done. Uh, in, in different pieces in different ways and had different grants for and consolidating all into one marketing budget so that we could be more efficient, you know, in some of the things we can, we can consolidate 
and make uh, stronger. So these are the things that have been done in the past, and we basically put it all under one roof. Okay, John, you can do the next slide. Okay, so this is the budget. This is the same budget that that we presented last week, and this is basically a a, a monthly number, uh, although it won't be exactly monthly, but uh, I'd say three quarters of it's probably monthly. Uh, some of it's annual, like origins for the website maintenance. That's a that's an upfront cost uh, and so forth. But most of this is is going to be done as we do it. Good portion, like I said, three quarters will be on a monthly basis. So it's uh, it, we don't need the money all at once. It'll be something that'll be spread out over the year. This is a twelve month budget, unlike the housing. Some of the housing projects, which are three, which are multi year. This is for one year. Yes, and we have we have enough budget right now to we have a barely enough budget to get through the end of February, and then at that point our our funds are are depleted, uh, and so we would literally kick this off right away in March. All right, comments or questions, Roger, you're muted. Uh, sorry. Um this is an incredibly professionally rich program that you've come up with and 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 I applaud the the work that's been done on it. I have I have some concerns about it. First, the fixed annual commitment of cost is very high. We're not talking about a one year program and you're going to be done with it tomorrow or or next year this is essentially you're committing somewhere between 100 and 150 thousand dollars going forward pretty much every year if you can continue this kind of program secondly i have a concern that you're marketing a product that has almost reached its productive capacity at this point um, what what precisely are we marketing when Woodstock is actually losing nightly bets at this point? Um, so so why are we continuing to market, or or do we need to continue to market a product that, through earned media especially, is doing exceptionally well? And I'm not saying that there doesn't need to be marketing, but I'm I'm not questioning, I'm, I'm opening for discussion what, what the goal of marketing a product that is essentially at capacity at this point is. And third, the marketing content that I have seen to date out of this initiative, and again, this is a, it's a very professional and very well executed initiative, is essentially addressing one audience as far as I see. Um, and that is the tourist audience. I know you were discussing ad addressing converting customers to residents, and that's great, but I have not yet seen that. And I think you've got some significant problems with that. Most, most, Importantly, the way the website is set up, the pay to play nature of the website does not give anything like a truly contextual picture picture of Woodstock or the surrounding area as a series of attractions. I, I mean, just an example, on the website, there is 506 is not in the lodging category. Woodstock sports is not in the shopping category. Going and looking at hiking under what to do, there's virtually nothing that that you couldn't learn much more efficiently somewhere else. So my question is, we're, we're asking for a tremendous amount of money. And again, I think the program has been very effective, but I have questions about a, the efficacy of it, and B, do we truly have the infrastructure to continue supporting it as, as a sustainability that goes beyond filling beds? Thanks. Larry? 
do you want me to answer any of these questions? Oh, uh, or, uh, sure, go ahead, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the nice thing about this, we're gonna, we're, we're really building an owned audience. And that owned audience allows us to market any time. So one of the things that doesn't happen right now, and one of the things that we want the program to do is to start to bring people to Woodstock, not during the peak times, you know, during the, the slower times. And by having the owned audience, by collecting these names, and we'll be building, I mean, in, in uh, seven months, we collected uh, 18,000 names, uh, you know, to help, to, to be able to, to. so the, a big part of the goal is to help market Woodstock during the non-peak times. And to do that, we need to have the own audience. Uh, you know, and the nice thing about this is we can turn it off or on as we need uh, and, and, you know, market more and more less just by doing more, more ads. And, and that's one of the nice things about this. The idea though, is that even if we're marketing uh, at, at all the different times of the year, what we're really doing is building an audience. You know, in building a list, uh, the in terms of the website, I, I agree with you 100%. The website is six years old, and really, what it's it's almost 10 years old. The content hasn't changed. And part of the initiative this year, and I neglected to mention it, is we're going to go through the website and eliminate some of the content that's just wrong. Uh, try to fix some of the categorization. Try to get. Uh, chamber members to go in and update their information. You know, unfortunately, we can't do that. It's it's something they need to do. Uh, and create, uh, continually create new blogs that are much more uh, information rich. Uh, I would love to take the platform and move it to a simpler, less expensive platform to use. Right now, it's on uh, probably the most expensive platform it could be on, uh, which means we, we need to pay a, a, a web maintenance cost that to me is way too high. Uh, but that's a that's a that's a one time cost to move it to a less expensive platform that'll save us over the long run. But we're not ready for that yet. We want to get the content right uh, this year and, and and work on making that better. Uh, so those are there was one a third question I'm not remembering. Roger, can you remind me? Um, well, I, I mean, I think you know addressing the the capacity you know, is obviously a significant thing. Um, and then the, I'm concerned that looking at, at the budget, which is a perfectly reasonable budget, a lot of this money is essentially encumbered every year going forward if you're going to maintain this program. So you're taking That's 100 true. to 150K out of the three to four, K that that the EDC gets every year. It's not my decision to make, obviously, but once you've encumbered that money, it's gone for everything else forever. Yeah, and that's a, it's a very good point, and you're right. And the well, how we're looking at it is, if you look at uh, other places in Vermont, like take Stowe as a perfect example. You know, they built a real strong marketing effort, uh, and when people think of Vermont, one of the first places they think of is Stowe. Uh, and so, you know, part of our effort here, and we can't do it anywhere near to the degree that they did. They spent way, way, way more money than we could ever spend. Uh, but the idea here is to is to build a continuing program that keeps people coming here, even during the down times, you know, and then again, driving them through the, the times when uh, business is slower. Uh, so, but yes, you are correct. It would be probably like $150,000 each year. Uh, we could probably trim it a bit, depending on how, what, you know, we don't do new content. We just stick with what we got. We probably bounce it around from year to year. But yeah, you're probably looking between 100 and 150,000 a year. And, and just one other point, and, you know, I'll shut up after this, but I, I, I definitely think it's a great idea to go through the, the, the Woodstock yes. <laughs> website and update the content, but part of the problem is the pay-to-play model means well, that there's well, we, content that it will be missing. Pleasant Street Books isn't there. It's one of the most interesting places in Woodstock. Mm -hmm. Skunk Hollow isn't there, and that's 
you know, it's not in Woodstock, but it is part of, if you're going to do a pay to play model, then yeah. you will not have representative content. Unfortunately, I have no control over that. That's the chamber. There's a, you know, there's this, this, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. I don't know what to call it, but. but uh, Patrick, let's move on. Uh, and, and Roger, let's move on. Larry. And then I think Susie, I'm not sure if you're clapping or raising your hand or both, Susie, but Larry first. I was a mis making mistake, but I am raising my hand. Okay, Larry. Um, yeah, I, this may be repeating in a different way what Roger was talking about. Um, and Patrick, you and I have discussed this, but I want to know what success looks like mm. um, and how that how that success aligns with uh, community values and, and desires. Um, is, is it more is better? Um, as I, uh, you know, you, you drive up, um, uh, as we all perhaps have to Maine along the coast, uh, on route one, and it takes you 15 or 20 minutes just to get into one of the towns. Um, is there a, uh, is there a desire to continue to increase numbers of tourism, um, in, in, and what, what exactly does that look like? What What is the goal? Yeah, we're, it's not to increase traffic. It's to market more efficiently and drive the right traffic. Uh, you know, and and so, you know, there's a certain times where you don't really need to market Woodstock, you know, for between paid, uh, earned media and so forth. Uh, but this is really to to level things out in, in Woodstock and, and trying to, you know, the, the, to me, the, the measure of success would be for us to build a really uh, extensive owned audience that we can use to market uh, for events and downtimes. And, you know, there are there are certain events that don't get a lot of play that could that we could have more people here. Uh, and there are times when businesses would love to have more traffic. And so we just need to to build this audience so that we can do that. And again, if we if we think we're too busy, then we slow it down. Uh, we still collect the information, but we don't market as much. Uh, so we, it gives us a lot of control uh, that you know we get to determine uh, what we do and when we do it. Uh, but I, you know, I think a big part of this is is driving traffic uh, to, to Woodstock. Wow that is going to stay in the lodging, buy, you know, in the retail and eat in the restaurants. Uh, that's, that's what the businesses need to have happen. And that's really, to me, this, the, a big part of the measure of success with this. Hi, right, Jeff, uh, Susie, sorry, Susie, Jeff, and Marion, I, when I, the order in which I saw you. So Susie. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, yeah, so when you say that, like my heart just sinks because there's so few times in the year that as a resident, I actually get to enjoy what I moved here for. And there's as a resident, there's very few times in the year that I don't have to chase people out of my yard because they think it's just all one big Disneyland. Um, I don't think that you understand the impact you have. There were stories in the, the, the influx of this constant barrage of people have on people's lives. There were stories about tourists sending drones up into people's yards. I mean, you know, we're more than just a, a, a tourist town. We are a people too. And we moved here. You know, you talk about you wanna drive more people into the restaurant. You can't get into a restaurant on a weekend. I mean, how much more, going back to Roger's question, you're at capacity. I personally think this $158,000 would be much better off being allocated to the housing committee. Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, so, uh, Jeff and then Marion. Uh, thanks, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I'm listening to all this and this is year 45 that I've had a business on Central Street in Woodstock. Um, and I've seen lots of ups and downs. And I have a sense of what can help us continue to survive and thrive and pay our employees increased wages that most of us are, have started to pay them um, and be able so that they can uh, afford to live here. 
Um, and it's all tied together in a symbiotic way. There's, this is a tourist oriented village and it will always be that way or it won't exist in a, in a, in a productive manner at all. So, I mean, I, there's no way to get around that. The, uh, the, I think what Patrick has said um, is so important. I've agreed with it from years to year, for years and years. And I'm sorry that one person in particular um, Susie, who keeps raising her, her voice on this, disagrees. However, it should not be taken as the general feeling of the whole, t of the whole village by any means. Um, the, I see the need for this marketing as more important going forward than, than ever because I, I sense that we have seen following the pandemic uh, a natural increase besides what the marketing has done um, in revenge travel that's perpetuated for a couple of years now, that's ne not necessarily going to stay. And this marketing plan will enable us to remain economically viable and thrive. Whereas if we take it away, we could fall down. There may even be a recession as you've noticed, as everyone has read, we don't know if that's going to happen for sure, but to maintain the viability of Woodstock as a beautiful town with businesses that survive, and I'm hoping expand, you know, there are a number of businesses that are going to open in Woodstock, increasing our capacity, hopefully um, another restaurant as well um, is in the plans. Um, so I, am, I, I think it's really important to continue marketing Woodstock, especially uh, uh, what we've seen in the past and what we're likely to see in the future. And um, the kind of tourists who can support Woodstock uh, is, where, is where this marketing plan is headed. And that's just kind of reality. Um, so I'm in, I, I, I certainly hope that the EDC supports that. It's almost a basic measure when you say it's, uh, this is for economic development. Um, Take away the villages, the businesses in the village, and their 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 ability to survive and thrive, and there is no economic development in Woodstock. So this is a tourist town. Thank you, Marion. So I have just uh, a couple of sort of specific thoughts and questions, Patrick. I mean, obviously this is amazing work. Um, one question I have is, I, I think that I understood there was some conversation in the last grant application for marketing about the sense that we needed to see a full year through in order to uh, to kind of do the pool building or audience building that we that we wanted to for a full you know for all four seasons and to acquire the content that would support it through all four seasons and I guess I was under the impression that once that we had that that audience building basically I, I realize it's not complete because people different people are coming at different times. But once we had gone through the full year cycle that the cost would be reduced because we had this audience that now we were going to be able to reach out to in a more organic way. So that would be my first question. And I'll just ask my second, then you can answer them both. And the second one is just, um, I understand that, you know, that for businesses, we need to think about, you know, economic viability and, and you know, how, how, that all, I get all that. I did notice and was a little concerned. The sample imagery um, did not have any diversity in terms of the people featured. And I wanna make sure that we're putting out an, an, a, a representing ourselves as a community that is welcoming to people that look a lot of different ways. And so I just wanna, I, I assume that that just happened to be the sampling that we saw, but I, I wanted to confirm that. Yeah, uh, in terms of that, this is a small smattering of of you know what we've done. And to be honest, we don't use a lot of people in there because for that we would need to shoot uh, you know people in Woodstock, and we don't have a whole lot of of that just yet. You know that that's part of you know the ongoing building of of content. Uh, you know we we couldn't shoot everything in the first year. Uh, in the to your second question. We are three quarters of the way through all four seasons. You know, we haven't done uh, basically a, a a full winter and a 
uh, mud season, well, for lack of a better term, uh, that we we did we just are starting doing winter now. Uh, so we we still need to build out the the really the mud season one, uh, but yeah, it's it will reduce as we in fact we've reduced it this year because. You know, if I added up everything that we did for the program, uh, along with the social media coordinator and the website maintenance and all that stuff, we would be way, way higher than this. So each year that we can trim back and make it make it slimmer, and I, I think it's probably going to be somewhere between 100 and, and 150 each year, uh, you know, we will do that. Uh, it's just we have to we have to keep looking forward and think figuring out what's the next thing. How do we make this better? One of the things I would love to do, we can't do it right away, but I would love to be able to do attribution, meaning we can tie people actually coming to Woodstock to our marketing. But that's that's a whole nother, that's two, three years down the road. I, I just uh, want to ask one kind of clarifying follow-up. I just want to, um, I guess my concern is that all the people that I did see were white people and like, I, I don't want us to be presenting an image that those are the only people that we want here. So I, I just want to no, make sure that that wasn't representative of all the imagery that we're we're putting out there. That's a, that's a great point. And right now, I think it probably is because uh, all of our models have been volunteers uh, so that we're, we're trying to keep the cost down. Uh, but but I will keep that in mind. And then the next stuff that we shoot, will get more diverse. But that when, to do that, we'll need to pay for models. Uh, that's, you know, that's just, again, we're trying to do things in a, you know, a very shoestring kind of way. Uh, I don't charge but, that much. <laughs> well, who is that? Raise like, your hand. Uh, they're we're, off camera right now. They can't we'll, see. I think we'll he's take starting you. a negotiation. Yeah. We'll, we'll take you. <laughs> I, it's a very that's our hardest thing in this whole thing was, was, was getting, uh, was, was getting models. I thought Michael was just tan. Todd, Todd and, the, and then Jill. Um, I, I'm really huge. I'm, I'm, I'm in, in, sorry, let me start over tired. <laughs> I'm in favor of all this. I have been, I think it's an insurance policy for the economic development of the town. That, that said, I I'm looking at things as $4,000 a unit to help a child or a homeowner in Woodstock. This is sort of that. So I look at the 160 grand, it's like 40 units of something. And I'm like, okay, if we bring in another million dollars, that's only like three people we can help with the occupancy tax money brought in. So the only thing I would say, Patrick, is, and I like I brought it up before, just about the social media coordinator, be 25 grand or whatever. I know nothing about this. I wouldn't try to tell you how to run your business. You do such a great job with this. I just, if you can cut anything or lower any costs, just think about it with sort of how we know the low hanging fruit on children or housing is, is not that your thing's not, maybe even more important in many ways because it's future proofing but um but you know it just would help you know so this could be the cheapest best budget ever but i, I would just hope that you really just try to do the best you can with as little as possible which again i'm sure you're already doing but it's um i fully support it uh it's just it is a big chunk as roger pointed out um and that's just the reality of it yeah i it, this year would be it'd be hard to do because we're we, we've we still have some things to finish up uh, but the goal is to keep it as sharp as possible. We we literally uh, we probably save fifty sixty thousand uh, dollars from what was spent last year in you know in all the everything that's been done for marketing. Uh, so, uh, but we will. That's the goal. I mean, it's always going to be a sharp pencil. I understand the budgets are tight, and you know as much as we can sharpen that pencil, we will. Joe. So I wanted to take that a little bit more specific and say, if you just had half this amount of money, what would it look like? If we had half this amount of money, we'd basically either we'd either just have a social media coordinator uh, and and the what basically it would be what we did what we've done previously: social media coordinator, paying for the website. Uh, you know, in the, all the basic stuff, uh, or we keep the marketing program running and we don't have a social media coordinator and all that stuff, uh, you know, that, that helps to keep the, the social media fresh. Uh, it's, can I, it's, Patrick, can I, sorry, can I follow up on that? Sorry, I interrupted you. Sure. Uh, but the, the, uh, the, um, 
this is 45% of our expected revenue this year. Oh. Um, and that seems to me to be excessive. Um, I, I think, by the way, I think the program is exactly right. It, it, it is doing the next set of things. And the number of things that we haven't done that we could do in the future is so much larger than the tiny set of things that we have done for the last 150,000 and the next 150,000 that we're gonna spend. This is nothing compared to what's possible and what you know world-class marketers do. I think it's a very, I think we've spent very intelligently to build the platform. I would like to see a budget in which we use the platform for a year and that we not make it better. And I think that that's not as good from a marketing point of view as, as making it better in all of these ways, but 75,000, 50% of this budget is class four, as you see, you know, the strategy management and execution. And I was under the impression that if we didn't want to enhance the platform, that we could run the platform, continue to gather more, you know, more of our, owned customers as you or owned target market yeah. and not improve in the other ways. And that would be not as good as this program, but it would preserve funding for new housing initiatives. There's another child care coming. It could, it could leave funding available for, for more marketing initiatives. We don't have the, the downtown rejuvenation group has not yet advanced as far as the other working groups. And there are some enormous potential projects that are probably even more important than marketing things like water meaning we may not have it and so uh, so uh, again that's you know so the the so I, I wonder whether or not philosophically and I, this is a version of Jill's question is what would it look like if we simply for a year ran the platform get, took those 20 18 thousand names and grew them to 30,000 and didn't do these other things. I mean, obviously we have, you know, I'm, I'm imagining a budget of 100,000 where we have the digital coordinator, we pay for the platform and so forth. We have some, you know, that costs us about 60,000 or so. Pay per so, click would be important. So we, you know, so yeah, we have a 40, a, yeah. let's say 40,000. We have to spend, I mean, unless we want to stop the 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 day to day marketing right. and blogging and so forth, we have to spend 60 ish, something like that. Right, so that so, so then we have then we have forty thousand to to pick among the things. I'm guessing we would probably ask class four to poll. They they're not gonna work for us for twenty thousand. You know, they have real clients. Um, and I would certainly I think they've done a fantastic job. I would love to see them come back in a in another phase. So what is that? Is that possible? Something like that? How does that work? A year of of leveraging it as opposed to expanding it. I would have to go back and and, and talk with class four and, and look at what we're doing on the flip side too with the social media coordinator. And you know, we I immediately I'd cut out the restaurant guide. Uh, you know, there's certain things I can cut out. We can we can lessen the 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 pay-per-click, you know, and do less of that. Uh you know, the more we do them, the more we build the list. You know, if, if we go another year on the list, uh, we could probably get to, I wouldn't be surprised to get to 100,000 names by the end of the year uh, or, or close to that. Uh, I, I'd have to go through and say, okay, what things can we take out? Uh, we we take the video content. The video content was to do the, the video to try to drive families. Uh, you know, why, why do you live in Woodstock kind of things? So there's things we can take out. And I can I can I can make it I can trim it to, you know, we just limp along, because that's what it would be. We'd be limping along. Well, yeah. Uh, other comment. All right. Other Roger. Is it? Well, hold Roger. Hold on one second. I just want to. Is there anyone else who hasn't spoken yet about marketing who would like to? Michael. I mean, Roger, you can keep yeah. your hand up. I'll come back to you. But I respect all the work that's gone into this, and I think it's a great program. But I feel like the opportunity costs are way too high. And I'd hate to be five years down the road and look back and say, okay, so we just spent 750,000 bucks on marketing when we could have spent $750,000 on housing or on childcare. And that's a huge chunk of money in five years time. So I, I, you know, I'd really love to see this shrunken down. So, and maybe it's where we create the budget first and then we see what we can do within that budget rather than the opposite. Well, that, that's not, 
how marketing works, so you can't you can't say that. that I, but we because, don't have an unlimited source of funds, Patrick. That's what I'm saying, and we have to really decide what's what the priorities are. are is, is marketing more important than housing or childcare? Or I mean, maybe it is. I mean, that's what we're here to decide. Yeah, it's the chicken and egg thing. I would agree. Yeah, I, I totally understand that. You know, shrinking it limits you, and you would you know to severely have to diminish your 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 I, efforts. I but go, at the same time, look, we have other things to fund. Marketers always get a budget and figure out what to do there. It's not like you can't start with what your budget is. Sorry. You know, you can start with a budget and say, what can I accomplish from there? Sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to. Yeah, no, but Patrick, I think Patrick is not, dis I mean, Patrick's not. He's done this, he's done this for many arguing. years. I, I know how it works. Uh, yeah, yeah. And All right, Roger. Roger. Um, yeah, I just, I don't want to get too far into the weeds here. But again, I think Patrick and the, the, the folks working on this marketing stuff have come up with a tremendously professional program. That program is severely hobbled by the website. It's not the job of the EDC to support a pay for click website, a, a pay to play website. The website needs to support, it needs to be the heart of the marketing effort. And right now you're severely hampered by the fact that you really can't do anything with it unless somebody gives you money to put their organization or their business on the website. You're missing tremendous amounts of context where visitors would come and say, let me go to look at the museum in Hanover. Let me go to this place. Let me go to that place. You're not marketing the area because those people aren't paying to play. So I think that before you spend a significant amount of money driving people to that website, you've got to make that website work for Woodstock yes. and work for the, the, entire, the entire gestalt of Woodstock, not the people who happen to cough up the money to be on it. And I know that's maybe a difficult political decision, but it needs to be done. Thanks. It, it, you know, I, Roger, I, I don't disagree with you there. Uh, you know, if it was, I've always said the ideal thing would be to have every business, you know, on a website or app or whatever you want to do. Uh, and you and pay to play and give the people who pay a, a bigger picture on the, uh, you know, more, more stuff and have them stand out more than just someone who's listed. Uh, so I don't disagree with you. That's a that's a conversation that needs to be had with the uh, the chamber, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, well, I I think that I guess my, my sense is that it, partly when I'm thinking of a slightly go slower approach, I'd like to see us address in 2023 two two festering issues and not spending at full at, at the full budget level during that time but spending i i would propose at two-thirds of it at a hundred thousand i'm picking a number the construct that both patrick and susie are familiar with which is pick a number and spend it <laughs> um and what i'd like to see so what i'm imagining is a budget of a hundred thousand dollars and a commitment to do two things. And actually, Joe, who missed the meeting, is going to ask for a very small third thing, which I think is easy to do. But the two things are, one is to, is to finally hold, not just in the EDC meeting, but in a larger public forum, a discussion about whether or not the community supports you know, a, a sensible tourism growth program. I don't think it's just Susie who is complaining. I also don't think that that's a universally held view of Susie's complaints. You know, and so I think we've promised to have that discussion. I've promised to have the discussion, and I think we need to. I, I frankly would argue on the side of growth, but smart growth if that's possible. But anyway, leaving that debate aside, I think we ought to have that debate. And secondly, as I think. Roger's point from a technical point of view is really important. And it makes no sense to have a really smart professional marketing program with the web with the website platform we have now. It's 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 one and a half hands tied behind our back. And Patrick, you and the team have done a fantastic job despite that. But 
John, really, you, and I, you and I had conversations about the website. You know, um, nobody disagrees. We need yeah. to figure out a way around to, to, yeah. to solve this. And I think so. So what I'd like, so what I'm thinking of is something again, because we're going to have one more discussion with another potential funding. And I do think we have downtown revitalization that has potential projects that funds we would think are important for. Um, that I'm, I'm, I'm thinking in my mind of, of, of what turns out to be $100,000 this year for housing, which lets us actually fund this year's version of the things you propose to go ahead with. I'll sh share the numbers in a second. And an arbitrary $100,000 for marketing, um, which gives us some room for a recession to happen and some additional funds. That, that, that just, I'm just telling you my thoughts. I, I'm saying this because I don't see any other hands. It's 8.30. And I want to just take five minutes for the third item on the agenda, and then we'll come back and make some decisions or have some motions and so forth. Hopefully, we can finish up by in fifteen minutes or so. Uh, that may that may be optimistic. Um, so, Patrick, thank you for this. I, you know, again, I'll everyone, I'll echo this is this is a great piece of work, and this would be a terrific program if we, yeah. It's a question of funding, and we'll all have our points of view about that. Um, Carolyn Olson is um, is uh, here, and she is going to share with us. I've asked her. I, again, we're kind of in a new territory because the process isn't everyone shows up on January 21st at 9.30 a.m. and submits their proposal, and then we evaluate it. We're now in kind of major grant territory, and we don't really have we're forming a process as we go. I think the process is reasonable personally, but but what I thought was reasonable was we have a potential major grant in one of our priority areas, childcare. Um, Carolyn and the Mills School, which is the school that she's proposing to start up, uh, was not ready to propose during the regular process. They just weren't far enough along. I wanted her to not give a presentation that we're vetting the we're going through the same process with her that we went through with the other four i'm guessing in the next month or two we'll be might be ready to come to the edc but i before we made the decisions on these other things i wanted you to hear in four and a half minutes carolyn what she's thinking of doing and um you know it's it's the plans are developing nicely and i want to have her to have a chance to share that with you so go ahead carol awesome uh thank you john so yeah, we uh, have been working on trying to find a location for a childcare facility uh, for a while now, for the past year. And we finally had have the opportunity um, to start it in, uh, at, it's called the Mill School, so it kind of gives away where it is, but um, at the Mill Building in Woodstock. So it will be another childcare facility that's right downtown. Uh, we close on the properties next week, so we're getting two units. Our business is over there um, already, so we're super familiar with the building. We've already submitted our permits for the childcare, and uh, it will allow for a space for 22 children. We currently have a director already on board because she's our caregiver, so she has all of the qualifications to be a director, and she also has a friend who wants to be a co-director. So we have two of the seven staff already figured out and we're waiting to do heavy staff staffing, I guess, until um, we have the green light on our permitting. So we'll, we'll know more on March 8th, but um, our philosophy for our schools, we're charging a little bit more because we wanna pay our staff a little bit more. So our starting pay will be $20 an hour. Um, our tuition will just be a little bit more, about a dollar to a dollar 50 more than competing competing child cares and um, we'll offer nine hours a day, whereas some only offer eight or eight and a half. So it's offering a broader range of um, child care options in the area. And um, one thing that we're also going to do is we're going to have a financial aid pot. So if there are families that can't afford that higher tuition, then we'll reach into our financial aid pot, which will come from basically our revenue for the year and any donations we get for the year. So we can cover any tuition that they can't cover personally. So it's a multi, um, multi, I'm blanking on the word, but there's, there's a lot of um, initiatives in it. So higher paid jobs, making it affordable for all and um, 
it's desperately needed in the area. We already have 33 people on our list for 22 spots and we haven't even marketed it or put it on the list serve or anything. And 83% of those people either live or work in Woodstock um, so far of the ones that have gotten back to me. So I don't know if I missed anything, John, from our conversation yesterday, but. The one thing, one sort of a process point, um, I, but I know that this is on the mind of some, maybe all EDC members, and it, as it should be, given that we funded, you know, an expansion of what we expect to be 75 spaces, there's sort of a natural question of do we need 22 more? Um, there's anecdotal evidence that we do, but there's, but it's a, you know, it's a big amount of money. Sorry, I should, we should say that, that what Carolyn is requesting, it's about a 200, if I get their numbers right, $230,000 project, and they're asking for about 90000 or 95000 from us. Um, and it's to do construction, basically. There's a there's a place that has been they've had the inspector come and so you know it's it's a it's a it's similar to some of the other projects and the scale and the cost. But one of the things I just want to let people know from a process point of view that in our grant agreements with the four grantees who to whom we've already funded, and with this or the mill school, if they were to submit an application, we have a requirement that at that, and I've done it this way, I hope you're all comfortable it's, with this, is that I, as one individual on EDC, they have to they can see their wait lists so that I can deduplicate them. Mm -hmm. And so we'll ask Caroline and we'll ask the other four as part of this process, for, the other four as part of the process of them getting their grants, as Caroline of the process for applying for the grants, but we'll do it all in the next month or six weeks or so before this grant is done. So that we can we can see to what extent the supply and the demand match. Now it's not going to be perfect. I think we all want to have a little bit extra supply. What we don't want to have is a massive extra supply so that everyone is now losing money. So I just wanted people to be aware that 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 mm -hmm. process is in place, whether or not Carolyn does it. But they'll be part of the process. So we will be able to when if this grant comes forward to us, this application, we will be able to say we've looked at the wait lists. Here's what it appears the demand is at a minimum. There may be other people who haven't come forward yet. So, so Michael, did you want to ask? Make a um, yeah, I just want to know, do you have a proposed opening date? And then if we're going to do this process, looking at the wait list, then would it make sense to give her some time to market it, to find out what the wait list would be? Well, the, this, rather than like what's just there now. Well, this is all, this is, I think, going to, if I can answer that, Carolyn, and you're free to comment. This is not, this is, not a proposal it's it's just right. for our information i think this is going to continue to develop it's developing quickly and we will i think consider the application because the major grant process doesn't have a day at a, at a time we'll consider it when it comes forward so yeah we, you, i was just thinking you're timing saying, with the other programs out there if it's going to happen this year or is it this is a 20 oh, no, no no well i'm going to ask for the i'm going in our grant agreement with the other four it says at the it says that at our request we can ask for their lists and we'll keep it confidential. We don't release obviously any. I mean, it's all the confidentiality. No one, no, no, no personal information gets released. It's just counting. So I would I would propose to do this list checking now. Oh, by saying now, I mean over the next six to eight weeks. John, if you think it's better, Carolyn, we could do it. 10 weeks from now it depends when she wants to put forward her proposal you're saying basically do it as close to the proposal as possible well, i'm saying so if, if there are people out there that want to be on the list that don't even know that this is a potential uh, I, then we're not counting them on the list which is not doing her a service okay. yeah yeah john, yeah john Patrick, go ahead yeah I, I think one of the things to think about in in as you look at that is timing when are these other places when when are their slots opening up you know, and it, and it may not be an issue of overlap or, or you know, based on timing, because, you know, some of them are going to come on pretty quick. Some of them are going to come on very much slower. So you know, you look at that as well. And and just to be clear, I don't want to set an expectation that this is going to be a precise calculation. This is going to be very rough. I think we're, I, I think our fiduciary duty is to just say, let's make sure that order of magnitude it, it makes intuitive sense to add another 20 spaces. And I, I think- I, John, if I can just chime in. I mean, it's, it's yeah. guys, it's all, it's simple. We funded a bunch of slots. Everyone is pretty positive that we could use more. Carolyn's 
got a great project going that can hold a certain amount of capacity with certain ages. And all John's saying is that he was, yeah. he got, he got a, uh, he had a check and balance put into the agreement. That's a yeah. great idea for us to gather that data in a not foolproof way, but a pretty good way. And so we'll present that to you all to make sure that we line up with Carolyn's ass to make sure that we're not making a bad investment. That's not necessary. Well said. Thank you. All right, Carolyn, do, do you want to, anything, any last thing you want to add? Yeah, just a uh, timeline. So we're planning on, as soon as we have our permit in hand, um, our construction permit, we can uh, go ahead. Our contractor's ready to start the renovations immediately. So we anticipate a month, month and a half for the build out because it's a pretty, it's ready to go. It's already been inspected by the by the fire marshal. So it, it's ready to rock on all of those fronts. Um, so as soon as the build out happens, we can get the furniture, get it set up, have the staff trained. All of them will be trained at the same time. So our goal is by June of this year. So in a few months, we're just doing, we're trying to do a quick turnaround. I think okay. that timing is critical, John. Uh, you know, yeah. when the other ones are opening up, you know, it could be perfect that 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 they're opening sooner and, you know, may not be an issue at all of of crossover. Hopefully that's the case. Yeah. So anyway, just just this is for you, the back of your mind, because we now have again, if, if we were to grant everything on these two proposals, we've spent we don't have money till June of next year. So. OK. So, Carol, thank you. Sorry, you have to wait till the end. But Thanks, I, Carolyn. Right sequence. <laughs> no, thank you. Okay. Um, does someone else want to put forward a proposal? I mean, I've sort of said what I thought, but I'm. I'm really interested in the numbers that oh, you, yeah. you came up for with. housing. Mm -hmm. I have a yeah. question about. Um, I'm not a great math person, so just putting that out there for <laughs> ask this question. But when we talk about something like the housing proposal, and we say some of it will not be needed until next year. Are we then saying that we're not gonna ask again for this amount of money for housing like to grow the program? You know what I mean? Like if we're if we're saying, well, we wanna spend 100,000, but 60 of it comes next year, but then we're spending 60 next year. What if we wanna spend 150 next? Like, I, I don't know if we're limiting ourselves. No, I think- that way. Like, I mean, it could be, we, at the time, we need to make this amount of money or ever if we wanted to, but- it feels like there's a there's a spot right now this year to work out a plan of the flow of money out and then build in one year or not less right. than another year to just take a look at what that I'm like. just worried we're getting I, I just want to make sure we're not getting ahead of ourselves. No, no, no. I think I this is I think the result of of a major grant approach. Yeah. Major grants, we've talked about this, naturally become multi-year, most of them. Right. Um, and I think we're easing into that. What I would say is that is that we, for now, we think of this request as because the housing request, I'm pointing to that the piece of paper, the housing request is naturally multi-year. I mean, the ADU yeah. thing occurs over three years. So what I would propose is just what Jill said. We basically approve what I what would be $160,000 over three years. Mm -hmm. It's 100,000 this year, it's 30 in each of the next two years. We can, add. We, can, we can add to that. We could, depending on the results in the first year, take it away. I mean, I, I think we should encumber it, but I, I suppose there are certain you know, outcomes. I, where I think my concern is if we have a finite pool of money and we start to say, well, just we're keeping track we're, of yeah, just keeping track oh, of it. Keeping track sure of it that we aren't, and, and making sure that we aren't saying like that we pre-committed in a way we're not really mentally. But you thinking, will be. But we will be. Yeah. Think about how things fill down to us. We're going to make a commitment to somebody who wants right. to build an ADU, right? And we're going to say yes. Here's the commitment to right. you. Actually, we and and mentally we know we've got the money in the bank this year. We're going to be first on your priority list next year and first on the priority list the next year after. And you're never going to get this place where you run out of money because we right. spent it for you. And, and then you'll have to get rid of the old program right. and to add new ones and decide whether it's new ones. Right, right. I think that what I meant to say was, for example, if we say we're going to put $70,000 against seven ADUs, 
And after the first year, there's only four. Right. We get some of that. But the, the nice thing about these incentive programs is that we we they we see if it works. Well, the, we uh, only pay if we only pay if it works. We're yeah. guaranteed either yeah. we're guaranteed either success or or our money back. Yeah. So so my, so the the numbers to answer Deb's question would be, in the first year, we would fund four things: the housing advisor for thirty eight thousand. 40 of the 70,000 for the ADU program, which lets us do seven units in the mm -hmm. first year. Mm -hmm. um, that Because we give half the, half of the 70,000 yep, in the first yep. year, as I said 40 instead of 35. 14,000 for the multi, a third of the multi-unit stuff, it probably should be um, half of it. So 20,000 for the multi-unit and 10,000 for home share. And so that's 108,000. And then in, in year two, we finish, we, we give another 15,000 for ADU and then 15,000 the third year that gets us to 70. And for the multi-unit, we give 20,000, 10,000 and 10,000. So it's 108, 25 and 25. Okay. And that adds up to their 100. So, so, so the housing advisor is 38,000 this year. And that's fixed. Correct, that's fixed. The ADU is 40. 40, 15, 15. Okay. The multi unit is 20, 10, 10. Mm -hmm. And the home share is 10. And nothing. We don't have anything next year. So if we wanted to continue it, Marion, to your point, we'd have yeah. to add an exit. And then the rental incentive, like, uh, don't oh, fund it, just spend oh, the 18 we've got. Don't take it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that was 3,000. So I, I didn't add that in. So yeah, the, let's say. Should we go with the 18? and we'll come back to you. If we find the magic uh, yeah. and we will come back and say- We already have the 18, so you don't have to ask us for that. Right, so, and yeah. you can, and we can adjust that and say, okay, this is what's I, working. We're gonna put the I, money towards I, this. I, I support the structure. Can yeah. you just, can we put it on a screen, John, so that I can't, you know, can you write it yeah. down for us? Yeah, hold, hold on one second. Let me see if I can put it on the screen. It might be actually be possible. Um, here, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share a, a document, hold on. Just, Just make FYI, sure it's work related, John. FYI, Roger had hand up too. Oh, sorry. All right, Roger, go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say not to be too mercenary about this, but this housing initiative and the child care initiative are great earned media stories, and we should go out there and make that happen. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Well said. Okay, um, I'm going to share my screen for the housing proposal. Sorry, this is um, probably completely hard to see. So hold on one second. Right. So painful watching other people use a computer. I mean, well, I said, also, I don't have a minute, so. you could be the best person on the computer ever. It's just hilarious how it works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna drive you crazy. All right, thirty eight thousand. It is a good font size. I will I will say I I, it's, I can read it. <laughs> Right. That gets the wise guy award. <laughs> Always. I'm going to throw a monkey wrench into this, John. Yeah. Because if this works, you're going to really need to take the advisor across 2024, 2025. Yeah, I know, but I'm, mm -hmm. but I'm not doing that yet. Okay. Just, well, just to... that's, a, that's a grant request for next year. Right, so next year we're going to come and ask for many more things, but we'll do a waterfall. <laughs> Better John to me. That's how you add up cells in Excel? Oh, yeah. man, you could have saved my life for so many years. <laughs> Not only that, Todd, there's actually a function. You can just grab the button and, and it'll do it for you. No, yeah. there, is this a licensed copy? That must be the difference. <laughs> 
This is an Excel. <laughs> this is Excel. It's a Russian. Yeah. Excel. Excel. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, Commander. Yeah. So this is what I'm proposing. Don, you're missing three thousand dollars somewhere. No, we decided to drop that. Package. Yeah, we punted it. We dropped yeah. it. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Unless, unless we find the magic button. <laughs> so, so, so this is this helps a lot. Yeah, I think this. You're yeah, welcome, everyone. I wasn't afraid yeah, to thank ask. Thank you, Todd. By the way, the 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 units. So what we're looking at also is 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 um. Let's just look here for a minute. It's um. Our target here is um seven ADU units within you know a year from now, four for multi and 10 for home share, right? So per unit again. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're looking at 21 and the total per unit is uh, about 5,000. And because again, yeah. we, have, we have high fixed costs because, you know. So don't you multiply that by the 158? No, because that's uh, well, year this is just 2023. The first year. Oh, you just have your first year. Okay, gotcha. year. It's a pretty good return on investment. Well, yeah, no, but but Patrick is, is right because, yeah, it's this is the cost this year. So, yeah, you're right. It really is 158. Oh, because you have to pay that money for those things later. Yeah, 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 yeah right. right, right. So it's, yeah. it's a lower... the money spent. It's just not spent right away. Well, are we calculating? And it's even higher. It's higher than that because this is going to be extended. But you know, I, I, we also haven't done the you know the, the economic impact. Of, I, to me, this is it's a small program. I, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable with that number. I think again, yeah. this is, if we think about this in terms of over the next ten or twenty years, we're going to be we're going to have a housing shortage for twenty years. Right. I mean, or so if we just think about just bringing in people that might have a family, like I told you all before, yeah, it's right. twenty one thousand a pupil to the district. It's it's massive, yeah. massive uh, amounts Absolutely. of money that come in. Right. Anyway, this is so. This is the rough economics of the housing proposal. Um. So uh, does someone want to make? I, I don't want to. You know, control. John, you got to make the motion because it's too confusing. No. Well, I, I, uh, but before I make the motion, uh, does someone else have a different concept or so forth? Because, you know, we when we make no. motions and we tend to. So this just to clarify, we, we are not funding any of the things that have to do with home buying. No, so not yet. Not yet. Right. Not right. This, these are all right. Correct. This is the low. This is a continuation of the low yeah. hanging fruit. Good work. Right. Solid, solid return. I love it. And then if we go with this, I would say expect to see it again. Progress report and then maybe the more. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, and let me just say that for that next request, my just my 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 request is that before that request is we have debates about this nature of the kind yeah. of things. Yeah. Okay. So to say, if no one else wants to make a proposal, then I will make a motion that we uh, that we grant the housing working group. Uh, we make a three-year program. That we are encumbering these funds, and so when we begin to plan for 2024 and 2025, we start with encumbrances. Mm -hmm. um, but that that we make this grant for 108,000 this year uh, to be used the way this chart shows, and for 25,000 in 2024 and 2025, with the the opportunity for us, obviously, to to not. Well, no, sorry, sorry. That, that we that we encumber these funds for this program, and that in the case of the ADUs and the multi units, those incentives, um, if obviously the units aren't built, then we the money, money doesn't go the out. money doesn't go out. So we're protected. Right. We don't need to we don't need to say that it's a subject to review. We will either get the units or we get the money back. I second. So, all right. Is there any? So Deborah's I moved it. Deborah seconded. Is there any? Um, so I just want to make sure that people aren't raising their hands. Is there any uh, discussion? Can who? I, let me just see who. Larry, you're on. And are there any other EDC? Larry and Todd. Larry, can you just come on the camera for a minute, or have you? <laughs> goes up just so we can see you voting. There we go. Or the top of your head. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion about this? 
All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate thanks, Trainer. Good work. Great work. Yeah. All right. Nice job. All right, on the marketing side, how does just someone? I, I'd like to. I'd like to. I'd like to propose bringing up a motion that allows Patrick to go and try to show us in short order what a what a hundred thousand dollar budget might look like. And that if he can do that and finds it acceptable and his expertise that we can review and and have a quick approval of it if it's at or below that number. Uh, my only my only struggle here is I got enough money to get through this month and that's it. So yeah. we would I would like to if we're going to do that and I've got to go back and, and cut this more uh, yeah. that we we can either do a special meeting to approve it so that I can. Have I'm OK money. with that. Yeah, so am I. I think that that's a perfectly reasonable. Um, uh, and but yeah, I mean that's uh, not reasonable. It's necessary. Is yeah. any, anyone object to that process? No. All right. So I will set a I'll set a um, a doodle poll and we'll f have a meeting before um, the end of February. Um, we we need to um, just to make sure we don't have an interruption in staffing because there's a sort of a real person, you know, and and there's a website well i don't know when the fees are due we probably have a few we probably our website how long how long do you think it'll take you patrick what you tell us what, yeah, what but my think? point todd he it's not the problem isn't him and us the problem is the select board i just want to make because they only meet every two weeks no, so yeah. um i'll um i can do it pretty quick todd does it make to sense to approve a budget for whatever you know yeah for march months or something and no, the problem is the select board has to approve that too um when's their next meeting john yeah yeah, the February twenty first. Okay, so so there's time. Let's meet next this? week. Yeah, well, yeah, we, I can have it for next week, easy. Okay, all right. So okay. I, we'll send out some doodle polls, and that would let us meet sometime. Multiple options next week, and we will get yeah, her done. We'll get it. Yeah. Get it in front of the select yeah. board. It, we, yeah, <clears throat> they're gonna want it. The twenty first is a Tuesday, right? Yes. Yeah, so all right. Wednesday? Yeah. 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 Yeah, the fifteenth. So I do. So um, fine. I will send out a doodle poll, but I'm going to be sending it out for Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. And just so you know, the reason why is so that we can send the material in advance to the uh, select board. Now, the good yeah. news is we have, you know, a, a terrific. Right. You know, we have a terrific it. presentation, and we've done all of the work. It's just a question of how you're going to try to shape that. So. So there's no need for that motion. That we're just not going to vote on the budget tonight. The guidance of giving you, Patrick, you heard from Todd. Uh, does anyone from the EDC, you know, have any? Are you all comfortable with that? I think that's a really good solution. <laughs> okay. All right. Good luck, Patrick. You get Let's it. see if I can make it the solution. You can do it, Patrick. I appreciate it, man. That's what You're I meant. Yeah, sorry. Job. It's a good proposal. <laughs> Let's see if we can make it into the solution. You can do it. Is there any? Other business? No. Can we have a motion to adjourn? Michael makes the motion. Is there a second? Marion is seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Right. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Nikki, thank Hi, you. Todd. You're still, really good. still with us. I hope you'll stop the recording. I know. Get tough. Oh. It's going to be easier. That's right. We won't yeah, have any more true. money to spend.